Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Stinchfield. When news broke that the special counsel appointed by the Trump administration to investigate the origins of the Russian collusion investigation indicted an attorney connected to Hillary Clinton, that's the belief, I said to myself, that's it, some cybersecurity guy who's being accused of making false statements to the FBI, this investigation has been going on for years and this is all we get? Is some attorney tied to the DNC? Where are the FBI agents that colluded and falsified documents to sink President Trump? Where are the Clinton staffers and government higher-ups that I am convinced played a role in the illegal smear campaign against President Trump and his allies? So I may have some answers here. A former White House insider with direct knowledge surrounding the Russian collusion case tells me before leaving office, President Donald Trump declassified thousands of Russian collusion documents. I'm told those documents directly implicate a number of FBI agents. I'm also told they will prove those agents weaponized the FBI and engaged in criminal activity. These documents will also show the FBI waged illegal political warfare on behalf of none other than the Democrats and of course the Hillary Clinton campaign. This high-ranking source from inside the Trump White House tells me former White House counsel Pat Cipollone, the custodian of those documents, is disobeying a direct order from his former boss by refusing to release the documents. President Trump even directed Cipollone to turn over those unclassified documents to a well-known reporter highly respected for his in-depth and fair reporting on the Russian collusion hoax. I'm talking about John Solomon from Just the News. He never got those documents. All of that, I'm told, has yet to happen. I'm also told President Trump only learned just this week that Pat Cipollone, his White House counsel, refused to follow through with his order to release the documents in their entirety. So instead... They sit hidden from public view, slow walked, apparently, by a man who should be loyal to President Trump. But now it appears, what, is he part of the deep state establishment? This refusal to release all of the Trump declassified documents is one reason why other former White House insiders loyal to President Trump believe the Durham report may be delayed. They tell me, Pat Cipollone, has a history, and this is their quote, of underserving President Trump and caused, quote, much frustration inside the Trump White House. Now, I tried to reach out to Pat Cipollone to get his response to these allegations. I left him a voice message. I texted him. Allegations are these disobeying President Trump and sitting on these important documents. I only got a call from an associate who disputed the so slow walk allegation, insisting Durham has all the documents he needs. President Trump should be outraged by all of this. And again, it's more evidence that my president never knew who he could fully trust, even inside his own White House. That, I believe, was his biggest challenge as president. As for that indictment against the Democrat lawyer, Michael Sussman, he stands accused of making false statements to the FBI during the 2016 presidential campaign. The indictment is for lying to the FBI about potential cyber links between a Russian bank and a company owned by a former, by former President Donald Trump. Now, the FBI found no merit to Sussman's allegations. Absolutely none. The New York Times reports Durham investigators believe Sussman was actually secretly working for the Clinton team at the time. Sussman, of course, denies that and any wrongdoing. His lawyers insist he'll be cleared. We shall see. What I want, though, are those documents related to the Russian collusion investigation that were declassified by President Trump before he left office. There were thousands of them. They need to be released. Holding them from the public is about as swampy as it gets. Well, joining me now is the founder of Just the News, the reporter, the man who should have been given all of those documents at President Trump's direction, John Solomon. John, welcome to the program. 
Great to be with you. Uh, you got that story just right about the documents. There's no doubt about it. John, what's in them? Why would he hold these documents from you? This could help the president. Mm -hmm. It could help inform the public. Yeah, listen, on the 19th of January, I met with the president. I was told I was going to get these documents. I got to see them in a declassified state. Uh, that night, and I was told a, a box was coming my way in the next 24 hours, and that didn't happen. And it's funny, that night, as all this was going on, and people were telling me, a handful of people scooped up some of the documents that were on one of the tables. They're declassified, nothing wrong with this. And they just threw them in an envelope and sent them to me, because they were fearful that something was going to happen to the larger batch. And I think over the last eight months, their fears have come true. So very shortly after the president declassified, I was able to break some very big stories. I got a hold of all of Christopher Seals, FBI handling reports, including his uh, September 17 report, where he basically told the FBI not only was he working for Hillary Clinton, he wasn't really sure what he had was real or even truthful or uh, accurate. Uh, so we were able to get some of those out. But the large batch of those that have not, that were declassified and were never given to me, I've now been told that the lawyers did not comply with the president's instructions to give them to me or to the public. And they were sent now to the National Archives, where we have to hunt for them there. And, and look, it's going to be what? Freedom of information request. They could stonewall yes. you now to get those documents when you could have just That's been right. given to you. Um, I've said for four years while President Trump was in office, his biggest challenge was knowing who he could trust in that White House. I don't know why he wouldn't comply with the order. Do you have any idea why Pat Cipollone would not comply? I don't know who made the final decision, who had what. I've heard different names of different people that had the documents in their possession. But at the end of the day, the biggest loser isn't John Durham. It isn't uh, President Trump. It's the American public. These documents would give us a complete accounting of one of the greatest political dirty tricks ever carried out in American history. And the president did the right thing. He declassified them. And somehow the team around him has managed to keep it from the American public for nearly nine months. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that just infuriates me. And it, and it should infuriate just about everybody who supports President Trump and is in search of the truth, which is really all we want. So that brings right. us to this latest indictment. You know, I call it somewhat of a dud. I mean, I, I'm interested that he's <laughs> supposedly connected to the Clinton campaign and, right. and, you know, he lied to investigators. Fine. But where are the big indictments that we've all been waiting for? Yeah, so there's still m much more activity. This indictment was only uh, handed up today because there was a statute of limitations of September 19th. It's five years to the day when Mr. Sussman met with the FBI and gave them what essentially turned out to be a bogus Russia collusion allegation. Um, uh, there are more things in the work. There's more grand jury activity. This investigation was delayed for a long time by witnesses who challenged subpoenas and fought uh, uh, Special Prosecutor Durham. So it's been much more slow, but this is a prosecutor that is tenacious, and I don't think he is anywhere near being done. I think you may see more indictments, and you will see a really remarkable, robust report based on the reporting I'm doing. But there's one important thing to think about tonight. Uh, there was a little preemptive leak last night in The New York Times, but when we got the indictment, Mr. Sussman's activities are pretty egregious. He was paid by the Hillary Clinton campaign to put together this allegation of secret computer communications between Moscow and, and Trump. Before he gave it to the FBI, the people around him told him it might be a red herring. It didn't look to be true. He nonetheless then walked it into the FBI to the general counsel, very high in the FBI, gave him the documents and told the guy, according to the indictment, this, I'm not doing this on behalf of any client. I'm actually doing this because I'm a good citizen. The FBI took that as, well, okay, we'll go look at it. They later found out that the, uh, this man, Mr. Sussman, was charging all this work to Hillary Clinton's campaign, including the day he met with the FBI, he billed the Hillary Clinton campaign for that. This was a dirty political trick. And it ties the Clinton campaign to this, which is really what we've suspected all along. That's the big news here, right, John? Absolutely. And remember, what Sussman's doing is going on simultaneous to what Christopher Steele's doing. Same month, Christopher Steele's meeting with media, meeting with the White, uh, with the FBI, meeting with the State Department. And all of these Clinton operatives are trying to flood the FBI with Russia, 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 trying to make it look like there was a Donald Trump problem that we now know didn't exist. Yeah, amazing. John Solomon, you've done tremendous work on the uh, Russian Thanks, collusion Frank. hoax and so many other stories as well. I appreciate you coming in and laying out the story about these documents. I wish you would have gotten them. It would have saved us a lot of time, that's for sure. Well, I'm not going to sleep until we get them. 
Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.